In this video, we'll be looking at the concept of angle of elevation and depression. Now, some of the questions that we'll be answering includes what is angle of elevation? What is angle of depression? What are the three basic trig ratios? How to identify the sides of a right angle triangle? And by that, we mean identifying the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse sides and how to calculate angle of elevation and depression using the trig ratios. So now let's get right into the lesson. Now, here we have a diagram, right? So here we have a boy at the top of a building and a girl at the bottom of a building. So let's say you're a boy, if you are a boy. If you're a girl, then we will look at you from this perspective. Now, let's say you're Bill, all right? And this, let's call this one Bill. I thought some names. All right, and let's call her Pam. Now, the angle of, the concept of angle of elevation, let's look at that first. Now, the angle of elevation is the angle formed when Pam is looking horizontally at the building versus when she's looking at Bill at the top of the building. All right, so it's the angle that forms here where, when Pam is looking straight across, which is the horizontal line of sight, versus when she's looking at Bill at the top of the building, which we refer to as the inclined line of sight, all right? Now, the concept of angle of depression now, we, we can say what? Is the angle formed when Bill is looking horizontally, so straight across, versus when he's looking at Pam on the ground down here, all right? So that's the angle that forms here. We refer to that as the angle of depression. Now, what you would have noticed if you already would have been exposed to the concept of alternating angles. Um, the angle of elevation and angle of depression, so the angle of elevation and angle of depression are congregant, all right? So both these angles would be equal to each other, all right? According to the concept of alternating angles or Z angles, all right? So notice this forms a Z right here. We call these alternating angles or Z angle. And according to this concept, this angle right here would be equal to this angle right here. All right. So notice also this thing right here forms a right angle triangle. So we, we, when it comes to angle of elevation and angle of depression, mainly we use the trig ratios to solve this thing. So you'll, we'll look at that further on in this video. Let's look at the definition. So as I explained before, the def definition of each is pretty much straightforward. According to this piece of information right here, angle of elevation, this refers to the angle formed between the horizontal line of sight and the inclined line of sight, all right? So just as I mentioned before, again, here's the angle of elevation. So this is the angle that forms between what? The inclined line of sight when Pam is looking up at Bill on, on the top of the building, versus when she's looking straight across at the building, which is the horizontal line of sight, all right? So the angle form between the horizontal line of sight and the inclined line of sight, all right? And here we have angle of depression now. This refers to the angle formed between the horizontal line of sight and the decline line of sight, all right? So again, in the diagram, the horizontal line of sight when Bill is looking straight across, all right, while he's on the top of the building versus when he is actually looking downward on Pam right there. So when he's looking straight across, we refer to that as the horizontal line of sight. When he's looking downward, we refer to that as the decline line of sight, all right? So we use some arrows to represent the directions right here, all right? Now, let's look at the different trig ratios, all right? So it's very important that we know the different trig ratios, all right? Now, 
let's first look at the right angle triangle here and we we'll, we we'll, we'll have some examples that we'll be looking at so, so let's look at this now here we have the opposite side we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse sides all right now what makes a side the hypotenuse the opposite and adjacent respectively now if you notice the adjacent side is adjacent to the angle given all right and if if you want to figure this out even easier than that it's always the the angle the the side rather the side where the right angle it falls on and the angle given is fallen so theta refers to the angle given all right so this is the side where the the right angle falls on and the angle given is fallen so pretty much the, the side where the, the right angle is on and the angle given is on we refer to that as the adjacent side all right if you want to to look at it like that now the hypotenuse is always the side that is opposite to the right angle all right so this is opposite to the right angle all right and another way how we could have looked at that is also that it is the longest side all right so it's, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the right angle triangle so th those are two ways how we can identify the hypotenuse side now how do we identify the opposite the opposite is always opposite to the angle given not the right angle no the angle given all right so the angle given the opposite side is always opposite to that all right so that's how we identify the different sides all right i will look at that further on in this video now here we have something to help us um identify and remember the different trig ratios all right we call this soccer tour all right so soccer tour easy way to remember the trig ratios now the first letter for each so i space them out a little bit so the first letter that i highlight using black hopefully you'll be able to identify that all right so the s c and t represents sine cosine and tangent respectively all right so the s represents sine theta all right so sine theta so sine of the angle is equal to the o represent the opposite over the hypotenuse all right and look at the second one now cos cosine theta is equal to the first one that comes which represent the adjacent side over the hypotenuse all right and tangent theta represent what the opposite the opposite over the adjacent so that's an easy way to remember it so if you don't want to just look at these things and just remember them out of your head once you remember that thing sokatoa then you'll be able to always remember how to treat with or how to to remember the different trig ratios all right now let's look at this thing right here now we want to look at how to correctly identify the opposite the adjacent and the hypotenuse sides all right so as i explained before we can do that once we understand um what makes each side different all right so remember here we have we have example one and they ask us to to label this thing so we want to identify what x represent what y represent what z represent as it relates to this example right here all right and notice these triangles take different orientations all right and if you like you could pause this video let me let me ensure that you see all the questions you can pause this video and you can then complete the questions on the paper all right and then you can then resume the video and watch and see the correct solutions for each all right so you can do that now let's look at this here we have the x now the x represent the adjacent side so remember the adjacent side is always a side that the, the right angle falls on and theta so both angle falls on this side all right but really the correct way to look at it it's always adjacent to to the to the angle given which is theta all right so this we refer to as the adjacent side so the adjacent so that's the adjacent now why now 
refer to y as what? The opposite side. So remember, the opposite side is always the side that is opposite to the angle given. All right. So notice the y is opposite to this. So we refer to that as the opposite side. All right. Then here we have the z. All right. And we know that that must be the hypotenuse. So that's the only side that is left. All right which is always the longest side or we can we can identify as what the side that is opposite to the right angle all right so that's always the hypotenuse so that's how we'll treat with example one and that's pretty much that let's just look at example four all right so let's just work up here first let's look at example four now here we have m n and o so we're going to identify what each side represents all right and notice each of the example they have different orientations all right but it doesn't matter once once you understand the concept then you can always identify the sides so here we have m all right so m the side that is opposite to the right angle all right so that's m which is what the hypotenuse all right so that's the hypotenuse All right and then we we have n all right the side that is what opposite to the angle given and the side that is opposite to the angle given we refer to that as the opposite side all right and here we have the side where that is adjacent to the angle given all right and the side where we're both the angle given and the right angle falls on, all right? So this side right here is the adjacent, all right? And if you only know how to identify two sides, then pretty much you'll be able to identify the third side, all right? So if you know the opposite side, so all you need to know is how to identify the opposite and how to identify the hypotenuse and you will ultimately know the, the adjacent, all right? So the opposite side is the, the side that is opposite to the angle given. The hypotenuse is the side that is opposite to the right angle, all right? And again, let's look at example two and five respectively. So A in this case represent what? A is the angle that is opposite to the angle given, which is theta, all right? And we refer to that as what? We refer to the angle that is opposite, we refer to the side rather, that is opposite to the angle given as the opposite side. All right. Opposite side. And here we have what? We have B you now. All right. And B is the adjacent side. And again, you already would have known that the third side must be the hypotenuse. Side that is opposite to the right angle, all right? And again, example five, we have E now, side opposite to the to theta is the opposite side. We have F, which is the adjacent side. Adjacent, and we have G now, which is the hypotenuse, the side that is opposite to the right angle. All right, and then here we have what? We have example three and six respectively, all right? So we have example three and six respectively. So here we have T, which is what? The adjacent side, we're doing six first, the adjacent side. We have u, u represent the opposite, the side that is opposite from the angle given. And v is the hypotenuse. All right. Hypotenuse. In example three, we have q, r, s. q represent the adjacent. Right, S represent the hype. Well, R. R represent the opposite, rather. 
don't reach the S as yet. I represent the opposite, which is opposite from the angle given, and S represent the hypotenuse. All right, and those are the examples and the solutions. All right, well, let's look at some basic examples of angle of elevation and angle of depression questions. All right, so here we have in question one, what is the angle of elevation from point A to the top of the building? All right, so first thing first, we need to be able to identify the angle of elevation. All right, so remember the whole concept of angle of elevation the angle of elevation is the angle formed between the horizontal line of sight and the inclined line of sight. So the angle of elevation would be formed here, all right? Now, before we start performing any calculations, first we want to, what you could do, you, you could pretty much um, um, write out the whole soccer tower thing to help you better understand or to be able to identify the trig ratio that you'll be using to solve this question. So um, let's see what we can do here. First, we need to identify the sides that we know the, the measurements for, all right? So here we have the adjacent side, all right? And remember how we labeled the sides? So this side is the adjacent side. This side is the opposite, all right? So here we have adjacent and opposite. So we need to identify which of the trig ratios gives us the opposite and the adjacent, all right? And here we have the tangent ratio. So we're going to use the tangent ratio to solve this question. So remember this thing, so tan theta is equal to the opposite, and I'm going to just write the first three letters of opposite and the adjacent, same thing, first three letters. So here we have tan theta equal opposite over adjacent. Now I'm going to plug in these numbers now. So I have tan theta is equal to, and my opposite side, the measurement for that is four over the adjacent, which is seven, all right? So now I need to find what theta is equal to. Now theta, now I'm going to transpose for theta. Now when I bring this tan on the right hand side, it will become tan inverse of whatever is on this side, which is four over seven, all right? So theta will be equal to 29.7 degrees, all right? So 29.7 degrees, so that would be the angle of elevation. So here we have question two, and this asks us, what is the angle of depression from bill to point P, all right? And the first thing we need to do is to identify where the angle of depression will be formed, all right? So remember again, the concept of angle of depression, this is the angle that forms between the horizontal line of sight. So it's the angle that will form between Bill's horizontal line of sight and his decline line of sight. So it would be the angle that would form there. So this would be our angle of depression. However, if we understand the whole concept of alternating angles, then if this angle right here is theta, then this angle here must also be theta. So both these angles are congruent. All right, so both of them will be equal. So once we find this angle right here, once we find the magnitude of this angle, then we would have obtained this angle right here, which is the angle of depression, all right? So again, we want to highlight our stuff first, so Sokatoa, help us remember the trig ratio, all right? And if you are comfortable with this, no need for that. But if you observe carefully, majority of the times that you, you'll be solving angle of depression and elevation questions, you'll be using the, the, the tangent ratio. However, not all the time, but majority of the time, you'll be using the tangent ratio, all right? So here, again, we're identifying here, again, we have the opposite and the adjacent side. So this question calls for the tangent ratio, all right? So the opposite side, which is 15, will have that over the adjacent side, which is 12, 
all right and again we transpose for theta so we'll have theta being equal to when when we bring this tan over this side it becomes tan inverse over tan inverse of 15 over 12 all right which comes out to gives us 51.3 degrees all right so this would be our angle of depression and again we could write a statement therefore the angle of depression from bill to point p is 51.3 degrees all right and that's pretty much the basics of angle of depression and angle of elevation if you watch this video to the end please remember to like share and subscribe to the channel